everyone. My name is Elaine Enriquez. It's wonderful to have you here with us in today's show, sharing your vision. We will be talking with Jody Astefan McIntyre from upstate New York, married to a New York police officer, has two children who now are adults. One is special needs. She loves working with children and because her eldest, being special needs, worked her way up in the field of education. Let's meet this wonderful guest. Jody. thank you for being with us here today. Thank you so much, it's very exciting. Wonderful. Jody. tell us about you being a mom. Well, I've uh, been a mom for about 30 years. Um, started out um, at a very young age, uh, 20. I had my first daughter who's special needs. Um, didn't know she was going to be special needs um, until about mm, six to eight months of age. Um, and it was kind of tragic. It was kind of, it was startling. It was tragic. It was scary. Um, my husband and I, you know, we were very young parents. Um, and it all just kind of, the story just progresses from there. I would say. So. Now, this is a life changing situation. And I'm sure that all those emotions were very strong at the time because it's something new. It's something unexpected. Mm -hmm. How uh, were you able from that moment on to move forward? How did you mm -hmm. view life? Uh, as, as you knew it? Well, um, that's one of the, um, I guess even setting here, it brings me kind of emotional, you know. Um, when we first were told that Stephanie, that's her name, it was going to have issues, um, I was in denial. Um, I refused to believe it. Um, I thought that if I gave her extra toys to play with or, um, you know, just everything extra that um, she would catch up. And and she didn't, which which was sad at the time and very hard thing to swallow. Um, but we were able to move on. And, and because of my story, I guess, of the things that I did throughout the years, it's helped me accept where she is now. Um, listening to your experience, I know it must be very hard because those are times that no one can imagine but the person that goes through. But there's a lot of things uh, that the Lord um, allows us to enrich our life, even with a special need, um, in your case, your daughter. Tell me about the experience as you went along and as you started to learn more about her condition, how that comforted you to be able to give her um, the best that you uh, could give her as, as far as maybe uh, comfort, love, understanding, and all those things that I'm sure you needed to work through. Mm -hmm. um, well, it, it was kind of uh, to make a long journey short. Um, my husband and I, as, a, as I said, were very young when we had our daughter, Stephanie. Um, we were in our early 20s. Um, and I was looking for a job. And it happened to be, I, or I happened to think of the preschool where Stephanie was getting services at the time. And something just clicked and said, you know, or you need to apply to that preschool. So I did, and it happened to be at a time when they were actually um, letting people go. And, but there happened to be one vacancy and I was interviewed by the supervisor and she was like, you know, I think you would be great at this job. So I got the job and I, I truly believe because of that, um, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, because, because as I said earlier, I was really in denial. Um, I, I thought if I gave her extra toys, if I put her on a special diet, um, whatnot, you know, if I pushed her as hard as I could, she would catch up, but she didn't. Um, so, um, because her disability is physical, she's in a wheelchair. So 
Um, I started working at the preschool. I started getting friends that helped me accept, understand uh, where she was. Um, I started to understand better how not only could I help Stephanie, but how to help other kids. So I went back to school, um, got my two-year degree, my, excuse me, my four-year degree, um, and then I got my master's to become a teacher. So, and that's pretty much, you know, there's, there's longer parts into that, but, um, you know, that's pretty much how it was. So. Can you let us in in your life with your daughter as far as the connection um was there any at any point in time or um is it still uh, something that you're working with well i i kind of I, I i love that question because i really believe it's about knowing your child it's it's really not i mean the connection was there from day one um and i you know working with my daughter um, it's all about knowing your child, no matter if they're typical or special needs. Um, it's all about um, knowing what their cries mean and knowing what their laughter means, no matter no matter if they're an infant or or um, a toddler, a preschooler, um, or special needs. Um, and so I I would say I have a connection from day one, to be honest with you. Um, she evolved to some degree uh, in her. Per per personality socially um but overall i just again it's getting to know your child and i think i had that from the start to be honest with you can you explain exactly what she has so we can understand more in depth uh as you studied uh and become more educated in the mm -hmm. environment that you're in working with children that are special needs well, Stephanie was born typical, normal. Um, she was born uh, weighing over nine and a half, almost nine, nine and a half pounds. Um, very, very, very strong, um, no issues. Um, it wasn't until she was about mm, four to six months of age that we saw some delays. And to be honest with you, she's been tested for everything um, and everything has been normal. Um, we think through process of elimination that it was from her vaccines. Um, although it's very hard to prove that and it's been 30 years. Um, but, um, but her diagnosis is, um, MR, um, or other health impairment as we say here in New York state. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of sad because there is nothing to, to diagnose her with. She's in a wheelchair. Um, she can't take care of herself. She can't speak. Um, she is very stiff. Um, and I think that that's because of the disability itself. Um, her laughter, however, is very typical. Her crying is very typical. Um, so with that, I always um, take that and run with it. That, um, you know, whenever, when, when she's trying to tell me something and crying, I, I take it for its worth. And I have to, you know, kind of look at her and do, do a checklist, like a process of elimination um, to see what's wrong with her. But um, again, there I wish I did have a quote unquote diagnosis, but there isn't. Is it still something of a quest for you and your husband uh, to continue until you get some answers? Um, when she was about... Mm, five, six, seven years old, I was on a quest. And the only problem with that is, is that it, it was really tormenting her. It was, it was because it came down to doing tests, medical tests. And um, we were tired of putting her through all that. Um, you know, I've seen some children on social media. Remember, you know, she's 30 years old now, um, where on social media, they're, they're showing their their children with special needs. And I see a lot of similarities and sad enough to say, um, a lot of these children, it was from their vaccines. Um, it is what it is, I'm not against vaccines. My younger daughter had all of her vaccines, um, but I do believe as a parent and, has, and as a special ed teacher, 
um, those vaccines should be split up more. Um, it's a lot to put into one system at one time. Um, but um, yeah. Jody, I have a question concerning um, groups, support groups. Is it mm -hmm. something that also parents that have situations similar as you and your husband with a special need child to have a support group? Uh, yeah, I do believe it's very important. Um, I myself didn't have that um, because again, it was 30 years ago. Um, and to be honest with you, I went through a period of time, as I said earlier, where I, I really refused. I, I, I was in denial um, and I didn't have that. I feel my support group was through the agency that I worked for. Um, and they helped me a lot. Uh, but yeah, I do. I, I believe now it's a very good thing to have, whether it's face-to-face -face or on the internet, um, because it gives parents resources that they probably wouldn't get anyplace else. And also to know that you're not alone. Yes, for sure. You need to talk to other people that are in the same or similar situation so you can mm -hmm. kind of um, maybe fit into and feel more comfortable uh, that you can just, you know, open your heart and express your worries or concerns or confusion, because I'm sure that lots of that exists whenever situations like this are being confronted to look for a resolution. But as a teacher, what is the main thing that you look for um, attending children? Like as far as when, as far as when I first get them in my classroom. Maybe? Yes, as far as when they first meet you and you get a chance to meet them, how is that encounter? Um, well, it depends on the age that I'm working with. I I worked with children at uh, the preschool level, which is uh, three to five years of age, for about 14 years. Um, And then I worked with children that are anywhere from five up to 14 year, years of age. Um, and typically, though, no matter what, I always look at the personality first, um, where their strengths are, and then where, where they're struggling. Um, and I typically work on their behaviors first, if there are behaviors, um, which could be not wanting to set, to look, to listen, to point to things, to follow directions. Um, if they have problems um, with self-regulation, well, which means they can't calm themselves down. Um, and then I go from there because I always have to benchmark them first. And that's a teacher term. Um, we have to see where they're at academically, socially, emotionally, um, and go from there. Jody, you were explaining about some of the situations that you face once you get to meet a child that's new to the classroom. I also wanted to ask you about your area of expertise when it comes to education. Um, I guess you could say my area is dealing with children on the autistic spectrum um, as far as their behaviors. And because primarily when kids come to me, no matter if they're at the preschool level or um, in the gen ed level, um, typically they have behaviors. And that means, as I said, they can't set, they can't look, they can't listen, they can't point to things, um, they cannot communicate. Um, so that's pretty much where, I, where my expertise is in. Do you continue your education to learn more about how to help the children or is there like a format that you follow in order to be able to connect with them because connection is important learning to mm -hmm. know who they are learning to know what they can do and how you can better uh, whatever level they might be at yes i use um, a variety of different programs i've used many programs throughout the years um, And the programs, I, I want to say, not one fits every child. Um, so typically, you know, I've learned the knowledge and then throughout many years of wisdom, I've learned like that program will work for this child, that program will work for another child. Um, because sadly, not every program works for every student. Um, and then as far as communication, Um, I use, I mean, we uh, use our voices, of course. Um, I use visuals. 
I use um, devices now. Um, and devices have come a long way in the past 25 years. Um, we used to start out with little um, buttons and record our voices on them. And now we're using um, a lot of different types of programs with on the devices called Touch Chat and Call Local to Go. Um, and then also we use sign language. Um, this year I had a student that had to use sign language and um, I had used sign language many years ago, but um, I've had to uh, reteach myself, I guess you could say, on sign language. So I use many different types. Do you feel, Jody, that routine for these children is important for them uh, to somehow grow and develop uh, in a way that they can feel um, that they can do things? Do some of them get to work at some point or level? Um, I feel that I, I think we should go back to there's such a thing called early intervention. And years ago, when your child like mine was diagnosed with anything, um, the pediatrician would typically say, okay, would you like to place your child someplace? And that was even before Stephanie was born, you know, back in the 50s and 60s or before. Um, and then came keeping your child at home. And with that um, came about early intervention, which is helping your child um, as early as they can through OT and PT and speech. And um, then came uh, preschool and then school age. Um, and yes, if a child is taught early enough, I mean, like my daughter, as I said, she's in a wheelchair and it is what it is. But the goal is to have that child become productive in society, is to somehow work in the community as best as they can with what skills that they are given or retain through school. Um, the routine part is extremely important, um, but I think that that's another um, type of program that was invented probably 20 years ago about routine and your child, especially on the autistic spectrum, needs routine, routine, which is true. But I've also come to the conclusion that routine is excellent, but it should be driven by the parent or by the teacher, not by the child. Um, because if you have a child on the spectrum, that child will want to do the same thing over and over and over again. Or if they get on a routine, they can't deviate from that routine, which is hard because life in all reality is not routine. Things happen to interrupt that. You know what I'm saying? So as long as the routine is driven by the parent or by that teacher, I think it's great. And with that, yes, you can get a child um, that can work on the community and you know, it, it varies. It's hard to say whether um, give you, or to give you a percentage because every child is different um, and with the disability that they have, you know. And that's good to understand because there's a lot of parents out there that become circled in their situation mm -hmm. and they can't see beyond that, especially mm -hmm. a new parent um, and also some parents that are facing this already, what mm -hmm. advice can you give them today? Um, don't underestimate your child. Um, I, I know a lot of parents that underestimate their child. E either they feel like, you know, I had one parent years ago, I, I said to my, my parent, where would you like to see your child in five years? And her child was like 13 or 14 years old. And She's like, I'd love her to be an art teacher. Well, yeah, I, I can understand that, but I needed a realistic answer. Um, and then I have parents that look at me and say, I'm just going to keep them at home their whole life. And they're not going to, you know, they're just going to be with me and I'm going to protect them. Well, again, I, I understand the answer, but in reality, um, your child is probably going to live longer than you are. So it's, uh, it's, it's difficult for parents to grasp. And, and uh, my husband and I d decided to place our daughter um, through an agency um, here that she only lives about a mile and a half away. Um, but we did that because we didn't want our daughter 
um, you know, if we passed away or something, we didn't want our daughter to be in limbo. Um, and that's another thing. Don't underestimate your child, but also, you know, treat your child as typically as they can be treated and give them a life outside of you. Jody, do you have any contact that we can share with the audience so they can reach you personally and directly? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, my email is uh, jodyastefan at yahoo.com. That's J-O-D-I-E-A-S-T-A-F-A-N at yahoo.com. Thank you so much for opening your heart and also your life story, your family, your daughter. We have pictures, so a lot of people will get to see her. And she is beautiful. And she oh, is you. someone so special that God has given you both. And I'm sure, I'm very sure that continuing working with them, continuing developing some kind of skills uh, that I'm sure mm -hmm. she's going to show you, and like many other parents that are going through a situation similar to yours will help not only the child, but also the parents. Thank you, yes. Thank you so much, Jody, And thank you for staying with us. Um, this is just a story that really hits home. Um, I get emotional myself because I see parents that are together um, for the better good of their children. And that is uh, an honor to have someone like Jody Astefan McIntyre with us. If you um, would like to know more about Jody, I would like you to reach out to us through our social media. Our website is ovmradio.com. And we are in Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. We're happy uh, to answer any questions that you may have or any inquiries. Thank you so much. And we'll see you soon on the next Sharing Your Vision. Bye-bye.